to a cabin cruiser leaking toxic chemicals into the water. There's no textbook in salvage that. You never know what you're going to run into. If you think it's going to be easy, it never is. In the wake of Hurricane Nicole in Florida, the salvage team is faced with a catastrophic scene. Two vessels stacked on top of each other and stuck in mud. It's about eight foot of muck. It's kind of like diving in jello. Can't see anything. Can't see anything except for two inches in front of your face. And in the heavily trafficked waters of the Gibraltar Strait, the epic salvage of a 50,000 ton bulk carrier is threatened by a violent storm. The weather can change very fast here, so you have to be able to act very fast. Watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out. A 32-foot cabin cruiser worth over $60,000 has sunk at its mooring. And it's leaking toxic chemicals and diesel into the water. The boat needs to be removed, and fast. The boat is located in southwestern Virginia in Smith Mountain Lake, the second largest body of fresh water in the state. Father and son Selvers Tim and Brian Stafford from Lake Hickory Scuba and Marina have been called in for their underwater salvage expertise. We're going to take them off. Yes. What we're going to do is get it out of the water before there's any more damage done around the water by fuel spills. The reason why the vessel sank is a complete mystery. Weather can make these vessels go down. I'd say this vessel's been down at least a week, possibly two or even three weeks. This is not going to be a straightforward salvage job. The biggest issue with this vessel, like a lot of them, it's not completely submerged. A lot of times, if you've got a vessel completely submerged, we can attach anywhere and get it up enough to be able to get completely under it and work on it. We can't do that here, so we've got to do whatever we can to raise it up. If we can lift up, say, on the engine area or on the engines themselves, get it up high enough, we might be able to send a diver under it if it'll be stabilized. There should be lifting eyes on those engines. Okay. Should be able to shackle right to them with two 2,000-pound bags. Sounds good to me. Hopefully, don't come across nothing that's going to be too hazardous. Just another day in the job. The cabin cruiser boat is sitting at an angle on its starboard side at the stern team needs to find picking points on the inside of the engine bay so they can attach lift bags. Today, I'll be leading the crew from the top side. I have two divers, my son, Brian, who's also a co-owner in the company, and then Brian Owen is another one of our salvage divers. I'll be using the surface unit with earphones and a mic that I'll be able to contact and talk with them back and forth. The divers gear up and swim across the water to reach the engine bay at the rear of the boat. We're going to have to get inside the engine bay. This is going to be the most secure place for us to rig our first series of lift bags. But the two engine hatches are locked tightly, shut from the outside. There's a bar all the way across the engine bay hatch doors, and he's got it locked down with padlocks. We can't open it till we remove that bar. The salvage crew doesn't have a set of keys to open the padlocks. So they're trying to take bolt cutters, and there's four locks on it, padlocks. They're trying to get those cut. It's not an easy job for the divers with the boat sunk on an angle. It's hard to stand in that boat. The boat's sitting like this, and they're trying to prop up on it and still work the bolt cutters. Put it up there on it. The last padlock isn't budging, so they need to change tools. The team is in, but they can't find any secure fixing points. Brian and Brian, they're both in the water. They've checked to see where attachment points are. We're not finding any right now. Time is money. And if the team can't get the lift bags attached, they stand to lose $10,000. Things are not looking good. In Southwest Virginia, on Smith Mountain Lake, the salvage crew is trying to raise a sunken 32-foot cabin cruiser. But the engine bay doesn't have any secure fixing points for the lift bags. You're not seeing any attachment points. 
So now that we've got the locks off and we got the engine bay doors open, the problem is now we're not finding any good place to hook a bag. There's no hooks on the engines like you would have on a typical inboard engine. This boat does have twin engines, but it's a true inboard, which means the screws are in the bottom or the props. It's not an outdrive, so there's nothing to hook to there. The divers start to look for alternative ways of attaching the lift bags. We're going to have to figure out a way to put the straps through the engine bay itself, maybe through the exhaust pipes of the engine or some type of sturdy device so that we can actually strap it around, put the bags on the strap, and lift it up. Look it over and just come up and tell Rick whatever you need. We need a live strong strap. Are we going to hook two or 4,000 of this? Yeah, that one. They thread the strap through the two bays using the divider in the middle as an anchor point. With the strap in place, now the divers can attach the first two airbags, which are both capable of 2,000 pounds of lift. Uh -huh. As soon as they start pumping air into the bags, the divers need to clear the area to avoid the danger of being hit or entangled by a lift bag. Gotta get out of here. They carefully monitor the boat for signs of movement. But it's not rising in the starboard corner. I don't think that's giving it nothing. Yeah, she's buried in the mud here deep. It's not lifting the starboard side like we had wished it had. You're still about eight to ten inches down in the mud on this corner over here. We got to get this corner out of the mud. The team is up against the clock. Every minute the boat remains in the water, it's leaking toxic diesel and chemicals. We've got to just regroup and now we're looking for another attachment point. There's a steering strap, okay? And it's bolted with big bolts to the front. Can we get a strap in there? The steering shaft is gonna take most of the load, okay? All right, along. They proceed to install the strap to the steering shaft. But working in 48 degree water with low visibility is no easy task. Yeah, I'm already around the fence, I've already ran the track through. You gotta get a bag ready. You get a strap under it? Tim's comm unit is broken. Quit working. So the headset quit working and we had to keep going. We didn't have time to mess with it. I took it off and we went to traditional hand signals. We need 4,000 pounds. 4,000? Four. Four. So unfortunately on a job like this, there is no concrete way of doing it. This is actually taking a lot longer than what we thought it was going to. There's no textbook in salvage diving. You never know what you're going to run into. The team is already an hour behind schedule, and losing communications means this salvage is in danger of being scrapped. Tim Stafford's crew is still wrestling with the cabin cruiser stuck in the mud on Virginia's Smith Mountain Lake. The divers have attached a strap to the steering shaft. Now, they need to carefully rig a 4,000-pound lifting bag. We've got enough lift. It just really depends on where you put it at. The bag is successfully attached. Now, it's the moment of truth. Just the one. Yes, I just want to know if you see any movement. Sometimes we're having to put air in this bag, take a little out of this one, put a little more to try to get that level lift. There you go, that's good. Let's sum of that air out. So we're not picking up on this side so much. Once we can basically get it leveled, it makes it much easier to raise it on up. Is it floating now? We're still in the mud over here then. Rolling? Hey, hold on a minute, it's rolling. Finally, there's some movement in the right direction. We got movement. We got movement. All right, give me a little more. See, we're moving. That black light on the side. Okay, yeah, now it's out. Yeah, it's out of the water. The rail is coming up. It was underwater before. Okay. 
the starboard corner has lifted enough for the divers to gain access under the boat. Now that we've got the vessel up enough that we've got a little bit of play underneath it, we can actually get down to the trim tabs of the vessel or where the prop is actually attached to the boat. You ready? Yeah. They start by rigging a 4,000 pound bag to the trim tabs. It needs to be tied up, keep it from slipping, because if this thing does come up and that nose goes down, it'll just pop out the back like that one. To avoid the danger of a 4,000 pound bag suddenly surging to the surface, this time, the divers secure it with a rope. If you think it's gonna be easy, it never is. That's about the way it goes. You never know. They've managed to rig two more bags on the boat. It's time to fill them with air. All the water's coming in the back. So all we have to do is raise the rear of the boat, the stern half of the boat, get it above the water, and we can start pumping. The boat is now raised enough so they can start pumping the water out. But it's not all smooth sailing. <laughs> The vents on the side of the boat are taking on water. If we start pumping and the vents are underwater, we're just pumping the lake. We're not actually pumping the water out of the vessel. To combat this problem, they use a tried and tested method to cover the vents. What we're doing is actually creating what's called differential pressure. As the water's being pumped out, it's gonna suck the bag to the vent, which the good news about that is it's gonna prevent any other water from coming in. We're clear. With the vents sealed, the pumping can resume. Little by little, the cabin cruiser is starting to rise. It's a lot of water to move out, but once you pump it out, she'll float on her own. About eight inches left. This was supposed to be a simple two-hour job, but it's taken all day. After a Herculean effort from the salvage divers and topside crew, the cabin cruiser is finally afloat but it's still not clear what made it sink. They think it was rainwater. Just rain and the village pumps didn't keep up. Could have been dead batteries. They may have quit working. So we've got the vessel up, got it pumped out. She's floating on her own. We've detached all the bags that we've had on it. They're fixing to tow it over across the cove to the local marina. They've got a trailer set up to pull it out. The boat is probably going to salvage as old as it is. I'm sure the insurance company will total it. I don't know what they do with it, but our job's done.